Hi guys, WNews.com and I'm here with the HTC One M8. This is the follow-up to the 2013 HTC One and today I'm going to show you the review of this beautiful, beautiful smartphone. It was announced back in March, March 25th, 2014 and uh, it all took place during a London event. This model comes with big hopes, HTC really wants to succeed and get a big profit out of this device. Well, it will be sold by 230 carriers all over the world, a lot of retailers, so it will be a pretty widespread product. Things I must say about this model, HTC One M8, is that in the US, HTC recommends a price tag of around $649.99, that's the recommended price, and on contract you should be able to get it for about $199. Okay, so let's get to the design. There are three colors of this model available. Gunmetal Grey, Glacial Silver and Amber Gold. Uh, the format of the phone is pretty much like the one of the HTC One, the predecessor. There are no capacitive buttons at the bottom. As you can see, we rely on virtual buttons integrated into the interface. And uh, other than that, we got a thickness that's 9.3 millimeters and the handset weighs 160 grams so it's a bit heavier and thicker than the latest flagships from other brands however you will not feel this thickness or this weight when holding the device in your hand it has a premium design it has a curved back as you can see right here and it looks simply gorgeous 90 percent of its chassis is made up of aluminum while the HTC One had 70% made of the same metal. The screen is now bigger, it's a 5 incher instead of the 4.7 incher of the predecessor and uh, the build quality is truly excellent no matter where you look at this device. I've seen recently a drop test of the phone, it was this model compared to the Galaxy S5 and the iPhone 5S, they were dropped from about uh, 7 feet and this one survived without cracking, without major scratches so even the screen is pretty top notch and the build is truly truly solid. This area below the screen seems a bit useless because uh, it has nothing aside from the HTC logo however recently an official from HTC said that this area is actually important because underneath it we have very important components and technology. Ok so I'm going to analyze the design of the device let me start off from the top where we have the on off button right here with much better feedback than the on off button on the HTC One there's also an infrared emitter in this area if I'm not mistaken in the button itself next up we move to the front well on the front side we have the boom sound speakers at the top and bottom and also 5 megapixel camera right here and the ambient light and proximity sensor plus there is a status LED embedded here and this is also the earpiece by the way bottom speaker right here on the left side we have the nano SIM card slot with a little hole for the key to remove it and on the right side we have the micro SD card slot and volume buttons once again with better feedback compared to the HTC One. Both this slot and this slot can be opened with the same metal key that's found in the package with the handset. Moving further at the bottom we find the micro USB port right here next to it there is the audio jack this is a micro USB 2.0 with MHL port. At the back we got a dual camera, you can see it right here with dual flash and we have these little lines that you can see here and here that have been cut in the metal for the sake of the antennas. Uh, now I'm going to show you the dot view case, this is an accessory that HTC sells for this phone, it protects the front and back of the phone, it's easy to clips the phone into it like this. And the cute thing about it is that once you close it down, the screen shuts down, once you open it up, the screen activates. And the another cute thing is that once you activate the phone, you can actually see the time and the date and you can even see some notifications. It has a nice dotted pattern and can be activated with your finger by tapping on the screen. So your tap will be felt through the case, which is very, very cool. As I said, you can see the date, the time, weather, notifications. And it's a plastic case, the price tag is, is $49.99, so it's reasonably cheap, I would say. We have these see-through dots right here that look really cool. And as I said, when you open it, you turn on the screen. Other thing we're mentioning is that uh, if you double tap, you turn on the screen. We got this little dot view here. It's a bit like pixel art, if you want me to compare it. And also, if you tweak the volume, well, in this mode, you'll see a representation of the volume on the screen. You can even start up phone calls from it and you can even trigger 
stuff by swiping the screen. So as I said, there's a lot of things to be done with the dot view case. Overall, the design of the phone is great and the dot view is also a welcome accessory that we really, really like. Okay, so let's put this on the side. We're done with the design, we're very impressed with it and now it's time to analyze the hardware. Okay, on the hardware side, on the hardware side we have this beautiful display. It's a 5 inch full HD screen. This one is a Super LCD 3, density of 441 ppi and Gorilla Glass 3 protection. There is a quad core CPU inside, it's a Qualcomm Snapdragon 801 clocked at 2.3 GHz with Krite 400 cores. The GPU is an Adreno 330, just in case you were wondering. And we also have uh, uh, stereo speakers, stereo boom sound speakers that you can see at the top and bottom here. And um, those speakers come with amplifiers. The storage on this device is 16 or 32 GB depending on the version you're going to buy. And we also have a micro SD card slot that supports up to 128 GB of extra storage. Other things worth mentioning is that the RAM is 2 GB of LPDDR3 and the camera at the back. This is a dual 4 megapixel camera with ultra pixel technology, dual LED flash. As you can see, we have a sort of a smart flash here, just like on one of the iPhone 5s, a cold flash and a warm light flash. At the front, a 5 megapixel camera, that's actually pretty good. And on a connectivity side, a very rich palette of options that includes uh, quad band connectivity, GSM, GBRS, Edge, HSPA Plus with 42 mega per second downloads, LTE, Wi-Fi, A, B, G, N, A, C, Wi-Fi Direct, DLNA, Bluetooth 4.0, NFC, Infrared, Micro USB 2.0 with MHL, we also have GPS, GLONASS and Stereo FM Radio. In the section I like to call and others, we got uh, accelerometer, gyroscope, proximity sensor and a barometer. Other specs worth mentioning are the ambient light sensor and active noise cancelling. And folks, we've reached that part of the review where it's important to talk about the battery life. So we got here an all-removable lithium polymer battery with a capacity of 2600 mAh. This battery on paper should provide you with 496 hours of standbys, uh, standby or 20 hours of talk time. In our test, we achieved 10 hours and 15 minutes of continuous HD video playback. Here we go, you should see it here, 10 hours and 15 minutes on battery, that's how we reach from 100% to 3%, you see right here, we use the player all the time, Wi-Fi on all the time, and by the way, once we did some gaming, after 4 hours of continuously playing games, we lost about 50% of the battery. The conclusion is that you will spend about 10 hours and 15 minutes playing HD video, and about, let's say, 7 or 8 hours playing games. Keep that in mind that the test of the video playback was done with the Wi-Fi on and brightness of 50%. I would say that the battery is very good. If you compare it to the iPhone 5S, it's a bit lower. That one achieved 11 hours of playback in our test. Meanwhile, we beat the LG G2 that scored 9 hours and uh, 15 minutes and the HTC One that scores about uh, 5 hours and 35 minutes. And I'm talking from experience here because I tested one recently. Uh, you can also activate special power options and uh, you should know that the charging time of this handset, the HTC One M8, well, it takes 2 hours and 30 minutes to fully charge the battery from 0 to 100%. We also have a special power saving option that is detailed here. It decreases the CPU power, screen brightness, vibration, data connection and all that. And then there is the famous extreme power saving mode and other options include the sleep mode that turns on the data connection turns off data connection during long periods of inactivity and fast boot that uses up quite a bit of battery. Okay, the extreme power saving mode, I'm activating it right now, conserves CPU power, reduces screen brightness, turns off vibration, turns off data connection and leaves you with a minimalistic interface and basic features like phone, messages, mail, calendar, calculator and that's pretty much it. Uh, the idea here is that uh, with 5% battery and using this mode, you'll be able to function for about 15 hours with this phone. This type of mode, the extreme power usage, is ideal when you're stranded on an island or in the forest. HTC claims that with 100% battery and the extreme uh, power saving mode, you should be able to get about 2 weeks of functioning with this device. Okay, so overall the battery is very good, as I said, only the iPhone 5S manages to challenge it. 
Now I'm going to do the usual audio test. I'm going to go to the music player that we got right here and get ready because the volume is huge. These are the tunes we got available here. We got artist detail. Pretty basic music player, nothing fancy. You can organize by artists. Recently played, albums, songs, playlists and all that. Okay, so let's listen. Okay, and now the conclusions. I must say that I like this visualizer. It's pretty nice. We don't have an equalizer option, which may bump some people out. This player will automatically draw its album art, uh, artist photos and lyrics from the internet if you select that. And now, as far as the boom sound speakers are concerned, we got huge volume from the speaker, excellent bass, great clarity, and these are the best phone speakers you can get at this moment. They even beat all the other tablet speakers we've tested recently, so these are the best speakers you can get on a mobile phone ever, or at least right now. Okay, and this is better than the HTC One, I actually compared it, I put them side by side and was surprised to notice that the HTC One seemed muffled compared to this one's sound. By the way, the voice is warm when listening to tunes on the phone. We also have some audio options, or better said option, this is boom sound. It's automatically turned on when you're using the speakers, but here come the headphones. These are bundled with the device. They're pretty comfy in the user's ear. And they're actually too loud. You should listen to about 70% to actually enjoy it. Their volume is huge and I truly mean huge. There's no point in damaging your ears. So 70% will be good enough. Got the audio jack at the bottom. And you can activate or deactivate the boom sound this time. I must say that the headphones come with very good isolation, you won't hear external sounds. They're very loud, they have a very clear uh, sound and a very good bass, so they're fantastic as well, just like the speaker. You can also go into the media area, access FM radio, check out a bunch of uh, stations. That will be pretty fast detected by your player and everything will be set. Okay, so this is the audio experience, excellent, I praised the HTC One a lot last year when it appeared. Well, this one, the HTC One M8, managed to be even better than its predecessor, thanks to these boom sound speakers. Now on the video side, what we're dealing with here is a 5-inch Super LCD 3 screen. This one is a Full HD display, um, it's a 1080p screen, and I'm going to show you a sample video. Here we go. As I said, 5-inch Super LCD 3, Full HD, vivid colors, a bit oversaturated if you ask me. This is a very bright screen. We got wide viewing angles, as you can see, no problem in that regard. The black levels are higher than on the predecessor, and the contrast is about uh, 1300 to 1, which is pretty good actually. This screen is also good in sunlight, it has RGB striped pixels, and we also used our microscope and our other tools to analyze it. Let's go to the gallery and to the download section. This is what the microscope showed us when uh, testing this device. These are the pixels, as I said, RGB stripe pixels. This is what the screen looks like when playing a game. Very crisp image. And finally, this is the lux level. With our lux meter, we achieved 463 lux units on white which is about 15 lux brighter than the first HTC One and you can actually notice that difference if you put the two phones side by side which is very impressive because usually you don't notice the difference when it's such a small level of uh, points between them okay this is maximum brightness and it's pretty pretty impressive uh, as I said this is a very good display aside from the slight oversaturation I'd say we are happy with the brightness also with the contrast viewing angles and everything aside from the colors maybe just a little bit 
other things were mentioning here well a, li a li bit of a side note if i can call it that way this phone is actually ipx3 liquid protection certified so if it rains and it catches this area the screen or the port or something you're protected of course this is not a waterproof phone however as i said it's uh, liquid protected so a bit of rain will not kill it just like the motorola phones from a while ago now i'm going to discuss the camera but don't expect to me for me to take samples first i want to take to talk theory in the beginning we have a dual 4 megapixel camera at the back this is called the duo camera and uh, we have dual tone flash next to it inside there's a one third of an inch sensor that's the sensor size and the pixels of this camera measure two microns the lens we have available here is a 28 millimeter wide f 2.0 aperture and the sensor has a 16 to 9 aspect the maximum resolution of the camera is 2688 over 1520 pixels the front camera is a 5 megapixel unit with f 2.0 lens it has bsi it has hdr and you should know that this second back camera the real innovation uh, it does not take pictures actually it creates a map of depth and you can create 3d like photos and you must know that this device this camera does not offer optical image stabilization the predecessor of this model actually did offer optical image stabilization we have that this one doesn't we have digital stabilization that HTC claims has evolved to a level good enough to compare to the optical one inside we have the HTC image chip 2 technology and those two LEDs I mentioned one is warm one is cool just like the iPhone 5s it produces a more natural illumination and uh, a cool thing here is that let's see you're in landscape mode and you want to take a picture just press one of the volume buttons or maybe press it when it's unlocked let's try it like this so let's go again as far as I know, you can activate the camera once the accelerometer senses you're holding the phone in landscape mode. Here we go. You should keep it like this. I'm going to show you again. So we're like this. Screen is off. And sometimes it does, sometimes it doesn't. As I said, it's an accelerometer based trick. So you really have to get your bearing straight in order for that to activate. Usually holding it in landscape should make it work. A bit of stage fright. Anyway, this is a prototype, but it worked once. Press the volume button, you enter the camera, that happens pretty fast. And for some reason we enter the game again. Uh, I must mention that this is an ultra pixel camera. What ultra pixel means is that the pixels are bigger, which means lower noise, better dynamic range. And by the way, the camera autofocus is very fast. It's about 3 tenths of a second. Okay, now let's check out the camera interface on the HTC One M8. So here we go, this is the main interface and now I'm going to talk about the main sections. We got camera, video, Zoe, selfie, dual capture and panorama 360 degrees. Well, at the top here, in the left side, you can find the flash options with auto, on or off. And next up, at the bottom, we can find the modes that seem to include, I'm talking about photo modes, we got uh, auto, we got night, HDR, sweep panorama, anti-shake, a manual mode that I'm going to discuss later, portrait, landscape, backlight, text and macro finally. So a lot of modes to play with here and following that we got the ISO settings right here, we got the exposure value settings the white balance and finally a bunch of filters that we can apply those were already known from uh, all the HTC devices so not very much innovation here perhaps innovation in the numbers because there's more of them than there were before other than that we also have a bunch of settings available here and among the settings we have the makeup level that you can tweak image adjustments like contrast saturation sharpness uh, the crop can also be changed from 16 to 9 to 4 to 3, 1 to 1, grid geotagging, self timer, continuous shooting, 20 frames and such, touch to capture, volume button options and that's pretty much it as far as the settings go. If you choose to select manual, well we got a nice thing going on here. So if you select manual, a pretty nifty user interface is triggered here 
where you can actually tweak your own white balance, exposure, ISO, uh, shutter speed and your very own focus. So all of this can be changed just like this. And this interface actually reminds me a bit of the one from the Nokia Lumia handsets, pure view. There you had semicircles in the middle of the screen, but this time here you don't get semicircles, you get these scrollable little areas. And you can actually select the option you like. Of course, there's also auto enabled right here at the top. You can change your own exposure however you want to, change your own shutter speed, and that's what the manual is all about. Now I've shown you the settings before that and now I'm going to go back to auto mode and I'm also going to show you the pinch to zoom. Here's pinch to zoom, pretty intuitive and also responds well to my touch. I have to remind you that uh, for example the Sony Xperia Z1 and the Z1 Combat had an exaggerated sensitivity to the touch. They were very fast to move but this time the pinch to zoom is nice. Okay, the picture taking is pretty fast. So almost uh, zero shutter lag, I'm going to take one with a flash and I'm going to check it out as you can see. The level of detail is pretty good, however you cannot zoom in very much as you would do on 20 megapixel shot or a 13 megapixel shot. So that's the problem you get with a 4 megapixel ultra pixel camera. At least the picture looks nice, the clarity is good, the quality is also pretty good and the level of detail is decent. You can take a burst shot by keeping this shutter button pressed. And then you can choose your best shot, all delete all of them and that's it. Quite a lot of burst shots taken in that single second or two. Ok, now on the video area, this is the video area, we got a bunch of capture modes here as well, we got normal, which is full HD 30 frames per second if you want it, slow motion and fast full HD at 60 frames per second, and then we got full HD HDR video. Options here also include ISO, exposure value, uh, white balance and a bunch of filters to play with plus the settings that include yet again contrast, saturation, sharpness, grid, video quality, review duration, some more camera options like lock focus during recording and that's pretty much it. Ok, so these were the settings of the photo and video, now we move over to Zoe camera. Well, Zoe is able to record the video and take pictures and create a beautiful collage, special collages of the places you visited for example. Uh, if you press this, you're taking a picture, if you keep the button pressed, you're recording uh, Zoe and if you keep it pressed longer than 5 seconds, you start recording a video. So that's the rule, if you keep it pressed lower than 5 seconds, it's a Zoe, it's, if it's more than 5 seconds, it's a video if you press it once, it's a photo. Basically it meshes up your um, photos, your videos and all that. That's how you create a Zoe and you can tweak your theme and you'll see that later on. Ok, so in the other modes, in, if you enter selfie mode, we have a very good 5 megapixel camera. You can take HDR, uh, portrait pics, you have a timer, you have exposure, white balance and filters and you can even shoot full HD video with the front camera and do HDR. Dual capture, well basically you can take a picture of what's in front of you and also include you with the front camera while Panorama 360 is very cool and it stitches picture up in order to create a terrestrial globe around you. Ok, I'm done with this castle right here, I'm going to show you a full gallery of samples that we took over the past days. Uh, there's over 100 samples here, a lot of goodness. I must mention from the start that the HTC One M8 has a tendency to slightly darken pictures in order to increase their contrast. So here goes the gallery. One thing I must mention from the start is that uh, these devices daylight pictures are not very much improved from the first HTC One. The quality is basically the same compared to the first HTC One, there's not an increase. However, as I said, they're slightly darker for the sake of improved contrast. What I said earlier doesn't mean that the pictures are bad, don't get me wrong, they're not bad at all. We also have a pretty good macro that I'm going to show you. Here we go, actually very good, and another one here, takes pretty decent macro pics, and it also takes pretty good panoramas, 
we also have a panorama here somewhere and 360 degree panorama I promised you here we go this is the 360 degree one actually looks kind of cool you can uh, rotate the view around you to see the sights you can even go up or go down rotate the globe so very cool or you can go like this so that's what the 360 degree panorama is all about I like the color that we got here, pretty realistic colors and pretty vivid the images are clear and crisp so no objections here also trying a panorama as you can see very well achieved and uh, the disadvantage is that you cannot zoom very much in a picture since we are dealing with a 4 megapixel camera in spite of the cool ultra pixels that's a setback when you really want to zoom in and get all the good details you cannot actually do that apart from a few let's say two or three levels of zoom you cannot get past that other things we're mentioning here is that the HDR is slightly exaggerated I have a picture of statues here so a regular picture of statues a regular picture of statues and HDR picture of statues you can see the exaggeration the, HD, the HDR slightly overdid it now as far as the night capture is concerned I've taken pictures of night and here we go I've also taken pictures of night with the Galaxy Note 3 and the iPhone 5s this model is about on par with the Galaxy Note 3 and it beats the iPhone 5s all of these are taken at night, some with flash, some without it I would say they're decent, they're less impressive than the ones of the Nokia Lumia 1020 so we can achieve better we also have Dropbox where we have about 200 pictures taken in London at the launch of the handset so Dropbox let's see right here here we go pictures taken in London in low light conditions it's always cloudy there so that was pretty impressive double decker bus keep in mind it was a cloudy day and the pictures are actually quite good in these low light conditions this phone never seems to take a blurry picture or a wrong one the picture went wrong never it just never misses so it handles well low light, it also handles pretty well the nighttime capture. Now let's talk video. I'm going to go back to the gallery. And video is one area where this device has improved compared to the HTC One. For example, we got a pretty good zoom. Here we go. You'll see that the quality of the image when zooming in is actually pretty impressive. The stabilization is not so good. We lack optical image stabilization the quality is still crisp we can film in 1080p at 30 frames per second or 60 frames per second we also have a cool slow-mo video to show you here we go this is slow-mo quality is I would say decent but the slow-mo effect is really nice those cars were really fast and uh, all the processing power required to get them to slow down well that's impressive on such a small phone I have also three other videos for you video number one is this one it's a regular full hd video 30 frames per second and then there is video number two which is in the same area but this time it's 60 frames per second you can really feel the difference it's like you're watching an action movie and you're in the movie that's my sensation the difference between 30 frames and 60 frames per second and finally we got the last video that's an HDR once again slightly exaggerated brightness these videos have a bitrate of about 20 mega per second the audio is also quite good and nighttime video capture is not bad I wouldn't say it's bad that's at night, 11 o'clock p.m. It's decent, not very impressive, does the trick. 
So the video taking aspect is about perfect aside from the exaggerated HDR and maybe the stabilization problems. Now going back to the gallery, you'll see here at the top of the gallery, in this section you can see the Zoe is being created in real time with some music in the background. And you can also tweak your Zoe experience if you're not happy with the Zoe is created automatically. You can also choose to select a certain content to be included in the Zoe, select some themes and select the music. You can also choose to remix stuff, restore chronological order, do some music settings right here. So Zoe has evolved a lot of settings to play with and the themes include this one. This one goes black and white. This one is more uh, vintage. And this one goes all rose on you. It's a rosy hue. The music also changes. So Zoe remains lovely. And there is also a separated Zoe app that sadly does not work yet, it says coming soon and it sends me to the Play Store. The idea of the Zoe app is to import pictures from other people, share your pictures and create a giant camera roll for all the users. Ok, so now I'm going to talk about the Duo camera and that's basically some post-processing stuff. It's not exactly real-time uh, photo, uh, real photo effect. So you don't exactly use this extra camera in real time. So we got this picture right here. I've taken this picture of a Lego robot in a room and then I select edit. And apart from the usual tools like flip, rotate, crop and all that, a bunch of cookie frames like grunge, montage, white and other things, plus a bunch of filters. And then we reach the effects area. That's basically the reason why we have a dual camera on this HTC. Okay, so we have the up focus mode. This one allows you to refocus, Lightro style, so if you want to focus on this area, you can focus on the robot, focus on the box right here. That's what the famous up focus is all about, that's the feature, you can save the picture with the focus you want. Then we got an option called the foregrounder, turns everything into a sketch, turns area of the pictures into a sketch, leaves the other ones normal. We got zoom blur, that does exactly what the name says, blurs certain areas of the image, then cartoon, pretty much like the sketch, but only cartoonizes areas of the photo. Then colorize, that keeps only certain elements of the pic, pretty much like the movie Sin City if you want, everything is black and white, only the blood is red or yellow, that's a mere comparison. Then we got a cute option, it's called Seasons, it takes your pictures and it has a, a spring twist to it, or a, autumn twist or maybe a snowy twist for the winter it's a cheesy effect but it's pretty funny then we got the 3d effect you can tilt to see it that's what the duo camera is all about the 3d thing there's also an editing option you can draw a line uh, around the object you want to adjust several options here then you can reset it and then you can enjoy your tilting in 3D. This may sound like gimmicks, that, but people would love them. We also have stickers, a lot of them. You can put a cap on your uh, picture, a bandana, a smiley face, a hat. And they also look pretty realistic, so you could fool someone uh, when looking fast at a the picture. There's also copy-paste. This one actually lets you uh, select human faces from other photos and paste them into this picture or pictures with other faces in them and if you have the picture of a human face you can do some skin smoothing skin lighting face contour you can make the face sharper enhance the eyes you can even increase the size of the eyes red eye removal eye brightening and anti-shine okay so this is basically what the dual camera is about post-processing editing of the picture making them look more 3d and that's pretty much it. Now the conclusion is about the camera, overall it's a good camera, there are a ton of options to play with, I like the duo cam thingy, uh, it has good low light capture and night capture, the video quality has also improved from the HTC One, but during daylight it's pretty much the same camera as the HTC One, there is no optical stabilization unlike the HTC One, which is a bummer, 
So the competition will be pretty tough this year. The Xperia Z2 and the Galaxy S5 already promised me what seems like a better daylight experience than this 4 megapixel shooter. I have to wait and see. We're done with the camera, finally. We move on to temperature and such things. And we got here a download, this is a thermometer. And we've reached 35.7 degrees Celsius after playing Riptide GP2 for 15 minutes. There is no overheating, so you can forget about it. And we proceed even further into the benchmarks territory, where we have a very nifty comparison with some of the high-end models of the past half year or so. So, screenshots. Here it is, I decided to compare this model with the HTC One, obviously, and the LG G2, because it seemed like a fair comparison. Okay, so in Quadrant we scored 24,217 points, we obviously beat the HTC One, that scored 11,995. We beat the LG G2 also, that scored 17,166. In Antutu, 34,567. We beat the HTC One and its 28,000 score, and we narrowly beat the LG G2 and its 33,000 score. Next up, Nanomark 2, 59.3 frames per second. Here we got beaten by the HTC One that has a smaller screen and got 61.3 frames per second, but we beat the LG G2 and its 58.7 frames per second. In Velamo, a bit of an error, it's not exactly optimized, as it says here. Is not fully optimized for KitKat. We scored 17 16 points. We beat the HTC One by 300 points. Got beaten by the LG2 heavily. So the G2 from LG scored 2900 points. As I said, not optimized yet. In 3D Mark, Ice Storm Unlimited, a very good score 17,570. HTC One scores 11,000 and LG G2 scores 15,000. 782. Meanwhile, an iPhone 5S scores 13,000 points, so we beat everyone, aside from the Galaxy Note 3 that scores 19,000. This is Geekbench 3, we scored here 979 in the single core and 2,900 in the multi core. The HTC One scores 500 and 1,500, so we beat it, and the iPhone 5S scores 1,400 and 2,500, so it beat us in the first test, but we beat it in the multi-core area. By the way, these scores also beat the ones of the Galaxy S5, just so you know. And here in the off-screen test, 1080p, T-Rex, we scored 28 frames per second. The HTC One didn't run, GFX, but the iPhone 5S scores 25 frames per second, so it's pretty fine. The test of the download speeds and upload speeds gave us about 20 mega per second in download, 20 mega per second in upload while the HTC One scores 21 or 19 in download and upload, so pretty close. Okay, then comes Browser Mark 2.0 with a score of 2607 points. We beat the HTC One by 400 points and we got beaten by the LG G2 by 200 points. Meanwhile, the iPhone 5S scored a pretty impressive 3500 points. Sun Spider, the lower the better, 643. And we got beaten here by the iPhone 5S with 473, but at least we beat the HTC One and it's 1100 points. Overall, the benchmark results are good. This is a powerful device that totally lacks lag, so no problem whatsoever with the lag. Although if you handle the Galaxy S5, its interface seems to be a little bit smoother than the one of the HTC One M8. Keep in mind that not all the benchmarks have been optimized. Now I want to talk to you a bit about the user interface here. It's called HTC Sense 6.0. It's minimalistic and it's not very different from the predecessors, HTC Sense 5 and 5.5. Um, we run this on top of Android 4.4.2. Good old KitKat. Here we go. And uh, we got the trademark transparent bar. We got the immersive mode that gives you all the screen to watch video. Those are KitKat features. And Blink Feed has received slight changes. For example, you'll see that the weather and the clock at the top from the HTC One are now gone. And here you can see the highlights and some of the things we search on the web and some of the services we're using to stay up to date. Another change you may notice here in this new version of BlinkFit is that HTC has moved away from a paginated interface to a free scrolling one. You'll see me scrolling and this is how you enter an article, this is how you check it out. Then you swipe to the other article, you can also share it like this, you can add it to a reading list, 
and that's blink fit in a nutshell and here at the top you'll see some options as I said we got highlights you got Google Plus you can add services and apps extras here include restaurant recommendations there's the TV guide included here Twitter Zoe kid mode Instagram Fitbit all of them added as extras compared to the predecessor you can also add more content from various sources or add your own favorite website just by searching it up uh, I like the fact that you can get to real-time restaurant recommendations that's cute you can add custom feeds and uh, frankly speaking this is actually better than Flipboard if you're asking my opinion and as far as the rest of the interface goes we have slight UI changes and slight icon changes especially in this area right here you'll notice that also in the settings area the icons have been made even more minimalistic the combination of colors is basically um, gray white and green and a bit of black so that's basically it of course we got virtual buttons instead of capacity ones that's a major change let's check out the widgets here we go trademark widgets from HTC a lot of widgets standard from Google here you can see the true design direction of the UI a lot of white and black and minimalism so as I said it hasn't changed that much from HTC Sense 5 and 5.5 this is multitasking it shows you the windows like this you swipe up to close them very free gesture you can close all of them like this or you can press this in order to see the running services check out how much free RAM you got and then we move over to the notification area where you see the notifications and these toggles right here that are editable as you can see you can add a ton of them a lot of them actually and let's check those out okay so we got connectivity toggles obviously we have a do not disturb mode that will keep notifications away from you in a meeting or while you sleep and we have a very interesting HTC mini plus this is actually sort of a remote control for this phone also a mini phone it's a tiny little device that connects to this uh, handset via NFC uh, or Bluetooth as far as I know it can take pictures from the distance so you put your phone here and this little device keep it from the side take a picture uh, uh, select the command to take a picture this one takes a picture and you do it from the distance and also you can take phone calls on this while you're playing a game on this device you have the device in your hand you're playing a game and this little device rests next to your ear and you're taking phone calls it can also work as a TV remote and it can also work as a laser pointer doing those PowerPoint slideshows during meetings so it's pretty cool then there's the famous motion launch that HTC has been bragging about so let's talk about motion launch we have a double tap to turn on the screen then we got a swipe down to access voice dialing pretty loud voice dialing if you ask me okay and then we got swipe left or right if you start with a swipe right you get straight to Bing feed Bing feed excuse me so these are the famous motion launch gestures available of course there's also that one where you keep the phone in landscape and you press a volume button and you access the camera with this nifty little shortcut um, there is also a bit of sensor action here HTC implemented among others Fitbit support Fitbit is bundled here there's pedometer support the steps you've taken calories you've used uh, kilos food plan and all that you can connect to Fitbit accessories and as I said earlier that gesture you saw with the volume button press to activate the camera was done thanks to accelerometers so this device is stuffed full with sensors which is pretty cool now let's check out the settings area nothing fancy here we're just checking it out we got media output to other devices data usage and VPN there's also security that also includes a kid mode with a parent dashboard verification of age and all that if a kid gets hold of this device you know what to do and then we got the display and gesture setting right here got font size font style notification led and finally motion launch gestures basically a demo what I've showed you earlier swipe up swipe down swipe right and volume buttons to activate the camera next up is the browser okay let's check out tablet news here we go tabletnews.com loaded reasonably fast and we got pretty smooth scrolling here this is the portrait experience this is the landscape experience very crisp screen very easy to view everything and now on the call side of things 
this is the dialer you can see your favorites here the list of people and all that and I have to say something here the call quality is very good and the sound is clear but uh, I recently spoke on this phone and then on the iPhone 5 and I found something interesting uh, the iPhone 5 is actually a bit louder than the HTC One M8 in case you're wondering other things that are ma worth mentioning here are the comfy keyboard so here's the keyboard very comfy for using however as I said I feel the need to compare it with the Galaxy S5 and that keyboard is actually more comfortable we cannot uh, do a full review without checking out the pre-installed apps on this device so let's go calendar with a slight tweak from HTC then we got Google Maps obviously couldn't lack from an Android device very intuitive responds very fast to my commands let's turn stuff on okay and then we got TV this is basically a two-in-one application it's a remote control for your TV or other devices in the house is compatible with and also includes a program guide only available in certain countries then we got Zoe that you saw earlier it's a coming soon app a media section that also includes 7 digital if you really want to purchase songs this is where you do it new releases and all that and then we got the usual selection of Google stuff Google Plus Hangouts Play Games and all the other things, play newsstand, play books, photos, Facebook and Twitter here, Fitbit obviously giving you a bit of fitness action, a car mode, every icon you see here is bigger so you can put this in your car dashboard and press every item you want, music, speak some commands, exit it, check all the settings and that's what you do when you're behind the wheel. And let's see other pre-installed apps, we got a clock, we got a HTC guide that sends you to the play store, for more info we got a kit mode powered by Zoodles, and uh, people area as I said HTC is not very big on bloatware which is a thing that I like they try to keep it as clean as possible stay true to the um, stock experience this is scribble and these are some things that I scribble recently you can actually play around here create some nifty doodles and sketches start from these templates you can send a greeting card to someone and uh, you can add a bunch of pretty realistic and funky stickers Okay, and then start drawing with a bunch of very nice and cool pens. As I said, you can doodle, you can draw, you can integrate a picture, video or voice recording, thanks to this cute little app. And also in the productivity area, we got Google Drive. Apparently it offered me 65 gigabytes of storage in the cloud for two years for free, which is pretty cool. Polaris Office takes care of your Excel, PowerPoint and Word files. And internet and tasks. Well, tasks allow you to set up tasks, reminders, dates and all that if you have an important meeting. Then we got stocks and we should be getting to the end here. Tools, calculator, flashlight, weather. Here's weather. Each year it's becoming more and more minimalistic. Someday we'll just be just be left with a figure and a letter, and that's it. Okay. Uh, voice recorder, Paris dashboard, HTC apps, and HTC backup. Checking out if there's any update for your device. And these are the ones that I installed, so no need to worry about them. Okay. So we've reached the end of the review. Time for the pros and cons. This is the big old HTC One M8. On the pro side, obviously the design, it feels very nice in the user's hand, it's premium, it has 90% metal, so it's very very nice, the dual camera is an advantage, some 3D feature, some refocusing, lots of camera features, lots of customization, contrast, sharpness, uh, clarity, white balance, ISO, and with that cute little interface that you saw earlier. Um, what else can I say, very good battery, 10 hours and 15 minutes, it's pretty close to the iPhone 5s, that achieves about 11 hours, at least in our test, and other than that, an excellent screen, nothing to object here, maybe aside from the slightly not so dark blacks, and uh, maybe for the fact that the colors are just a bit oversaturated. The audio is perfect, the volume is huge, the headphones are also perfect, we have a micro SD card slot, so we cannot complain about that anymore. Uh, this is actually the best Android UI on a phone right now, if you ask me, aside from the stock one. I don't fancy the UI from LG or the one from Samsung, but this one I truly like. And there's no bloatware, which is very good. We have an excellent front camera, which is something that many device makers are focusing on these days for selfies. A lot of features, it does HDR, has a big lens, wide lens, 
uh, full HD capture, so 5 megapixel shooter with some very good quality at the front. Plus those sensors and those cool little swipe moves will get to you because they uh, ease up the use of the device. Now on the con side, of course it's not perfect, so we have some negatives. We have no 4K recording in a world filled with phones that have 4K recording. The daylight shots are a bit underwhelming. I cannot help but think that the way that the pictures taken by uh, Xperia Z2 or the Samsung Galaxy S5 will look like. And when I see these ones, I think about HTC One, not the one I made. It hasn't evolved that much in daylight. Um, also, the call volume is below the iPhone 5 when you're taking phone calls. There is no equalizer in the music area and I have to say that these little small edges will often make you press apps at the edge of the screen by mistake, which is a bit of a bummer. There is no optical image stabilization and this black band below the screen is not very pleasing aesthetically. Still, this is a very good phone, so let's give it some grades. 9.8 out of 10 for design, 9.3 out of 10 for hardware, 9.8 out of 10 for operating system and user interface straight out of tabletnews.com. The final grade, if my math is right, is 9.63 out of 10 for the HTC One M8 and it's a pretty good improvement compared to the HTC One. Still the camera is a bit of a letdown and uh, I feel that it cannot fight giants like the Xperia Z2 or any modern PureView model or even the Galaxy S5 if you ask me. So 9.63 out of 10 if you really don't care that much about daylight shots at least compared to the modern flagships. That's it from tablenews.com. Bye bye.